Yep. So that'll be the next set of notes for, yeah. for Revelation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The lesson notes. All right. Uh, so tonight we're going to be taking a look at uh, Amos chapter eight. So tonight is is Amos eight, and uh, next week will be Amos nine, and that'll take us through the, the end of end of this study, as well as the end of our Wednesday evening uh, Bible studies, because the following Wednesday then is Ash Wednesday when we we begin the Lenten services. Um, so uh, Lent is coming upon us quickly. Uh, so uh, so Amos chapter eight uh, this evening and. Uh, Israel's uh, ripe, uh, the vision of ripe fruit uh, that's, that uh, Amos has. So uh, let's begin this evening and ask for God's, God's blessing on our study. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us together. We ask for your guidance on our study tonight. Uh, help us as we study the, the message that you gave through, through Amos uh, to remind us of the, the reality uh, of your, your words, uh, that you do mean what you say, Lord. Uh, so when you warn us, those warnings are not just uh, to, to scare us and uh, that you're just bluffing, because, Lord, you never bluff. Uh, remind us, Lord, uh, and uh, move us then with your words of, of warning uh, to uh, amend our sinful lives and to turn to you for forgiveness, because, uh, Lord, you, you are ready, willing, and eager to uh, show us that, that love uh, that you have for us. Yeah. Guide us in our study tonight uh, and bless us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Bless you. <clears throat> All right, Amos chapter eight. Uh, if you're if you have the book, it is the bottom of page two hundred forty nine. Um, Vision of ripe fruit. This is what the sovereign Lord showed me: a basket of ripe fruit. What do you see, Amos? He asked. A basket of ripe fruit, I answered. Then the Lord said to me, The time is ripe for my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. In that day, declares the sovereign Lord, the songs in the temple will turn to wailing. Many, many bodies flung everywhere. Silence. To fix his message in the minds of the prophet and his hearers, the Lord sometimes plays with the sound of words. The Hebrew word for summer or fruit that ripens in summer is kayitz. The word for end is kayitz. Uh, both words have the same consonants. Uh, God gives Amos this vision of summer fruit to tell the people of Israel that the end has come for their nation. The ripe fruit means that Israel is ripe for destruction. The Lord will put off his judgment no longer. With a few brief strokes, the Lord paints a picture of the fall of Israel. In the days of Jeroboam II, the land is full of the songs of temple singers, praising Baal and the other fertility deities, or offering to the Lord the false worship at the calf shrines. <clears throat> All those songs will turn to wails of terror and sorrow as the Assyrians besiege the Israelite fortresses and capture them. There will be so many corpses that the people will fling them out into the streets or over the city walls. For some, even someone who strains his ears in the stillness after the battle will hear only dead silence. No one will be left to cry or the survivors will not dare raise their voices for fear of calling down further punishment from the Lord. Um, also in chapter 6. Uh, we are at the bottom of page 250, uh, page, page 250, um, Amos chapter 8. If Israel's fate is already sealed, why does the Lord send Amos to preach? Number one, he shows that his judgment is just. He, we could compare the way a judge might read the charge and formally announce the finding of a jury before pronouncing the sentence on a guilty criminal. Number two, by warning about the coming destruction of Israel as a nation, he summons individuals out of the doomed people to repent, much as Peter did when he preached in Jerusalem. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation, Acts 2. Number three, these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us, 1 Corinthians 10. Knowing the sad history of Israel should make us beware of repeating it. <clears throat> the greed of Israel's merchants. Hear this, you who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over, that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath be ended, that we may market wheat? skimping the measure, boosting the price, and cheating the, with dishonest scales, buying the poor with silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, 
selling even the sweepings with the wheat. Amos addresses some parts of his prophecy to particular elements of the Israelite people. For example, the wealthy women in chapter 4, the complacent leaders in chapter 6. He also proclaims judgment to all Israel in chapter 2, or even to both kingdoms, Israel and Judah, in chapter 3. In the present verses, he turns to the greedy merchant class. Their offense is not wealth itself, but the way they are gaining it at the expense of their needy fellow countrymen. They treat the poor like dirt under their feet. Evidently, these merchants observe the forms of worship. They join the religious assemblies when the new moon announces the beginning of another month, in Numbers 10 and uh, 28. They close their grain stalls in the marketplaces to rest on the Sabbath days, according to the law in Exodus 20. Yet all the time their hearts are not in their worship. Rather, they are itching for the days of rest and worship to, be, to pass so they can get back to making money. Do we sometimes neglect worship in order to make extra income on overtime pay so we can spend it on luxuries? Do we occupy our minds with thoughts of profit or loss even while our mouths pray and sing hymns? Do we go to church reluctantly or participate in public worship half-heartedly because time is money and we do not like to spend it feeding our souls on the word of God? Do we couple such disrespect for the Lord with a lack of concern for our needy fellow men? then we become like these Israelite merchants. The particular kind of business which Amos uses as an example is the sale of grain, since bread was the common people's staff of life. Grain was sold by the ephah, ephah uh, a measure containing a little more than half a bushel. When a cus customer bought grain, he paid with bits of silver, balanced on the merchant's scales with a shekel weight, two-fifths of an ounce. These greedy and dishonest merchants in Jeroboam's time are selling their wheat in skimpy baskets, holding less than a full ephah. They weigh the price in silver against shekel weights that are heavier than customary. See Deuteronomy 25. Besides, they also cheat their customers by using unbalanced scales. Honesty will, will be one of the marks of those who follow the Lord. A Christian merchant will want to give a good measure and a quality product for a fair price. He will not package or advertise deceptively and excuse himself by saying, let the buyer beware. Each of you should look not only to your own interests but also to the interests of others, Philippians 2. In order to get enough food for himself, his wife, and his children, the poor Israelite may be forced to sell himself and his family into slavery. He may be so needy that he will sell himself for a for the price of a pair of sandals, just to have enough to eat. Even then, Amos says, the grain he brings home from the marketplace may not make good bread since the merchants sweep up what has fallen to the ground and mix the sweepings with the wheat. Already in the first sermon Amos addressed to Israel, the Lord pointed to the unrighteous treatment of the poor as a symptom of the nation's impenitence. The Lord's law commanded, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your poor brother. Give generously to him and do so without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hand to. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your brothers and toward the poor and needy in your land. Deuteronomy 15. The Lord does not regard how his people treat. The Lord does not disregard how his people treat their fellow, poor fellow men, particularly their poor fellow members of the people of God. For he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted, who have no one to help. Psalm 72. In both the Old and New Testaments, the Lord puts himself at the side of and in the place of the poor. He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, he says in Proverbs 19. On the last day, Jesus will say to his believers who fed the hungry, gave hospitality to the needy, clothed the naked, comforted the sick, and visited the prisoners in jail. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me, Matthew 25. Do our lives show such evidence of faith in him? <clears throat> and then uh, chapter 8, verse 7, uh, following earthquake, darkness, and mourning. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, I will never forget anything they have done. Will not the land tremble for this and all who live in it mourn? The whole land will rise like the Nile. It will be stirred up and then sink like the river of Egypt. In that day, declares the sovereign Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your religious feasts into mourning 
and all your singing into weeping. I will make all of you wear sackcloth and shave your heads. I will make that time like mourning for, for an only son, and the end of it like a bitter day. Earlier in the book, in this book, the Lord took an oath by himself in chapter 6. Here he swears the same kind of oath again, calling himself the pride of Jacob. Rather than boasting of their own accomplishments, the true people of, Israel, of, of God will glory in their Savior. The Israelites, however, have proven their impenitence and unbelief by disregarding the Lord's justice and righteousness. Therefore, the Lord swears this terrifying oath. I will never forget anything they've done. In speaking of the coming judgment, Amos describes several events together, just as Jesus predicted the fall of Jerusalem and the world's finest final judgment almost in the same breath in Luke 21. One sign of the judgment will be an earthquake. The Nile River rises at flood stage and then sinks down again. In the same way, the ground beneath men's feet will heave and fall. This frightening event took place two years after Amos predicted it. Another sign of judgment will be darkness at noon. Amos may predict, be predicting an eclipse of the sun. According to Assyrian records, total solar eclipse took place in 763 BC. Events like earthquakes and eclipses confirm the fact that, this, that the prophet truly is a spokesman for the creator and judge of the world. All his prophecies of judgment for Israel will come true. Uh, and that's from um, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Where the Lord talks about uh, the, the prophets. Darkness beginning at noon accompanied the sufferings and death of Jesus at the cross. The earth shook, the rocks split when Jesus died. Je God was, was speaking his angry judgment on the sins of the world which his son was bearing. There will be famines and earthquakes before Jesus returns. Matthew 24. The darkening of the sun, moon, and stars will also announce the second coming of Christ to judge the world. From Mark 13. The Lord reminds mankind that the pattern of life as we know, know it now, with the sun standing firm underfoot, the darkness following light every 24 hours, is not eternal. This world will not stand forever, and history is aimed toward a final judgment. For impenitent Israel, the coming day of judgment will be a day of wrath and mourning. Amos returns to the note of lamentation he struck in chapter 5. Morning will replace happy songs and festivals. <clears throat> Everyone will put on sackcloth, the coarse material which the people wore as morning, as morning dress. They'll shave their heads, a morning custom, custom forbidden by the law, but apparently adopted by Israel from the heathen. So bitter will, be, will the day of judgment be that it can only be compared to a day when parents mourn the death of an only son. The kingdom of Israel will die. How dark the picture becomes when men forsake their God. If impenitence and unbelief take the place of faith in human hearts, then fear must also take the place of hope for the future. When Jesus described the signs of the last day, he said, Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. Luke 21. Those who live in repentance and faith will experience the same events with a totally different reaction. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near, Luke 21. <clears throat> the famine of the word. The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land. Not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Men will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. In that day, the lovely young women and strong young men will faint because of thirst. Those who swear by the shame of Samaria, or say, As surely as your God lives, O Dan, or as surely as the God of Beersheba lives, they will fall, never to rise again. No other nation enjoyed the privilege, privileges of the Israelites. Israel was entrusted with the very words of God, reference to Roman, Romans 3. And yet the time will come for this people, the Lord says, when they will be totally deprived of his word. Like thirst-crazed dying men, they will stagger from the Mediterranean to the Dead Sea, from Galilee to Gilead, looking for a message from the Lord, but they will not hear it. The strong young men and women seem to be best equipped to survive famine and thirst, but they too will become faint for a lack of the word and finally fall. The reason for the famine of the word is plain. 
instead of fearing the Lord their God, serving him only and taking their oaths by his name, the people have followed other gods, the gods of the people around them. Deuteronomy 6. They now swear their oaths by the shame of Samaria, an idol god, or by the calf, golden calf image where Jeroboam set up, at, set up at Dan, or by the god they worship with their pilgrimages to Beersheba. When God raises up prophets from among their sons, they command them not to prophesy. People who refuse to hear the word of the Lord finally cannot hear it because God takes his word away. Commenting on Paul's words, now is a time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation, 2 Corinthians 6. Uh, Luther said of those words, the preaching of the gospel is not an eternal, lasting, continual teaching, but it is like a passing shower which travels on. Some ground is watered and another place stays dry. It does not return and also does not stand still. Then the hot sun comes and licks up the moisture that remains. If we neglect the word and refuse to follow our Savior's, Savior's leaning, leading, the gospel will pass on to others like a summer shower and will not return to us and our children. The time to hear, believe, and follow the word is now, while we live in the day of God's favor. All right, that's the end of chapter 8. All right, uh, taking a look at the notes then. <clears throat> uh, ripe fruit uh, in verse 1, um, and um, the commentator uh, made note of this as well. Um, in Hebrew, the word for summer fruit and the word for end include the same consonants, uh, different, uh, so a little bit different nuances in the way that those words are, are pronounced. So the Hebrew trans or the NIV translators convey the uh, Hebrew pun by using the English word ripe, which can have uh, the same double meaning, right? So um, if uh, summer fruit is ripe, right, it's, it's ready for picking, uh, but if something is, is ripe, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's coming at the, at the end. Uh, and we use, we use it that same way too, right? Oh, you know, um, going out to Isom's and, and picking, you know, getting those, those peaches when they're ripe, right? When they're, uh, there's, there's nothing like that. Uh, but you leave them, you leave them too long and they're ripe, right? Uh, right. We, so we, we use it, right? So something that's rotted or, or, you know, uh, smelling up this, you know, or you, you forget about something in the refrigerator and all of a sudden you open up the, the, the container and whoo, that's ripe. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, and I know that that never happens to anybody, but uh, right, <laughs> the back corner of the refrigerator or that, that bag that's in the, in the vegetable drawer and all of a sudden you pick up that, what used to be a cucumber and it's just nothing but kind of liquid mush and you open it up and whoo, right, it's ripe. Um, and so that's, that's the way that the, the word is, is being used here too. Um, so chapters 7 through 9 contain those five visions. We talked about the, the first, I believe it's the first three last time. Um, this chapter contains the fourth vision. What is this vision and what is the point that the Lord wants to teach Israel and us with it? What the vision? The, vi the basket of ripe fruit, right? And what's the lesson that's, that, uh, that God is, is teaching uh, through Amos uh, to the Israelites and as, as well as to us? Yeah. The time of grace is over. Right. So this, uh, they're ripe for the harvest. They are ripe for, for destruction. Um, Israel was this fruit, and it's uh, God's judgment is is near. Uh, if you recall, uh, right the, in chapter seven, Amos was praying uh, for the Lord to kind of spare from some of the the specifics, uh, and God says, "Yes, I will. I will spare them from from the from the locusts. I'll spare them from this from this drought." Uh, but they're not going to be despaired. They're not going to be spared from from the ultimate ultimate judgment. Uh, that you're not allowed to pray for because my my decision is already already made for for that. Um, and so uh, the Lord was uh, was very clear on what He was saying through through Amos. And remember, uh, while Amos is saying these words, uh, that that time of Jeroboam the second is still a very prosperous time. Right, so economy is still good. Uh, the the houses are nice. The you know the markets are full. The 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 crops are being harvested. The times are still good as Amos is 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 proclaiming this message. But the Lord uh, will come like a thief in the night. Yes, exactly. Right, things things are about to change, and it it will come um, unexpectedly, but 
Um, but not, um, how can we say it? Unex they, they don't know when it's happening, but God has said it's, it's happening. It's very, very similar to Jesus' return, right? We don't know when that is, right. but we do know that it's happening. Uh, there we, are signs right, that they that, and the signs, as well as the as the actual words of our God, who right. says, "I am, I am coming," um, and and so we see those we see those signs, and and God uh, God allows us to see those signs and reminds us of those promises, um, so that we can heed the words of our Savior, uh, who says, "What I say to everyone, I say to you, keep watch, right? Uh, be be ready." Uh, <clears throat> So, if the Lord, going on to number two then, if the Lord had already decided to bring the history of the northern kingdom to the end, to an end, uh, why is Amos sent to tell Israel about it? Why is he sent to preach if it's already, if it's already been decided? I, I saw that he, he, he did it to save a remnant. Okay. Warn and spare those who Okay, that's that's a part of it. Marilyn looked like you were getting ready to say something. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah, okay, all right, that was okay. All right. Um, yeah. I, and uh, give him one last chance. If if <clears throat> he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And so the Lord would be being true to His word if if. Uh, and he fell on their knees and repented and really meant it. Okay, so that repentance that takes place for the individual, mm -hmm. right? Um, those individuals are still are still saved, even as the nation itself gets sure. gets destroyed, sure. right? Um, and that's that's always God's God's intention, right? As he as he sends those warnings, right? The uh, the destruction is real. Uh, but God is also concerned about the individual, um, and it's also uh, and uh, the commentator brings out a couple of, of other other important um, factors here by having Amos um, say what what God had already decided, right? This is this is a just judgment of God, right? It's mm -hmm. it's an announcement of this of this judgment, uh, and that judgment is just, um, right? The way uh, the the judge reads the charge and formally announces the findings of the jury. Right, the jury has decided. He'll he'll read that uh, as he pronounces pronounces the, the the sentence on the on the the guilty, the one who's been found guilty. Um, and again, that that final that final call to repentance for the for the individuals, because uh, again, the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that everyone should come to repentance. Uh, what God says, uh, He says in in love. Right, He says this because He loves us. Um, that's and that's always why why God will uh, will uh, express these these things and uh, you know so uh, and this this patience uh, you know for for God uh, and his his love and his mercy continues to extend uh, until the end of time um, and that's why that's why the Lord continues uh, to uh, to give us that message and says continue sharing this with the world um, the the destruction of the world is is already determined by by the Lord. Uh, he hasn't told us when that is. He knows when it is, but but we don't. Uh, but he says the time is the time is now. Um, the time number, is right. The time is right, right. Uh, and <clears throat> and so when Jesus and and thinking uh, for the Israelites, right, that was that was imminent. It was it was coming, right, with with the end of Jeroboam. Um, that that dynasty uh, finished uh, and things went downhill very quickly after after the reign of of Jeroboam the the second uh, <clears throat> and for us right as as Jesus says I am coming soon uh, we know that uh, the one who says that is uh, outside the realm of time uh, but he does say I'm coming soon but he did say those words two thousand years ago. So what is soon to God uh, has been over 2,000 years for us, uh, which reminds us what the Lord a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. And uh, not that God slows down time, but that God is, is, is outside the realm of time. Um, and, and so uh, the Lord 
the Lord reminds us of that so that we know that it's it's a real thing. Uh, but he also is is gracious and slow to anger. Uh, he's patient with you, as as Peter says, not wanting anyone to to uh, right to be condemned, but everyone to come to repentance. But this is a very vivid picture of what is yet to come. Absolutely, yes. And that's that's important. It gives us a sign of what's a picture of what's coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so the the reality of of destruction, uh, the reality of what God is is. Uh, is promising, right? Because remember, uh, the promise of of the uh, the end times, the promise of of Jesus' return and its its glory, um, which he's going to get into some some details with, uh, you know, these these uh, you know the, the fear and the the trembling and and things. Uh, but there's two different reactions for that, right? As the as as Jesus returns. Um, so number three, then the the Lord would judge his people. For their greed and their trickery, um, what are some of the the ways that the the merchants cheated their customers and oppressed and oppressed their fellow Israelites? Now, before we we look at those specifics, remember why God is is bringing this up, right? Um, he's he's not saying that these sins are worse than what everybody else is doing. So why does He bring this up? Why are these people doing this? Uh, and and we, we talked about a little bit before, um, this was earlier in, in Amos, which actually takes us back to before Thanksgiving. So it's, it's several months ago. But, um, but if you think about, about it, uh, what, is, um, what is the Lord's purpose for bringing up these specific things that they're doing? Is he, is he saying that these are, these are sins that are worse than everything else? No, they said they're typical of probably what goes on. Okay, it's typical what's going on, and it's typical of what people do outside the word of God. when they don't have faith in Jesus. Right? If I'm not guided by the word of God, um, I'm, I'm going to take shortcuts with people. Uh, I am going to be dishonest in my scales. I'm going to charge people more than I should be. Um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna package my product that make it seem like it's, like it's full when it's only, you know, a, a quarter, right? You, you see those pictures every once in a while, right? Where, you know, they're, they're, they're showing this, 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 this uh, package and, and the bottom of the package is actually empty and, you know, it looks like that the whole thing is full and, and you, know, you know, all those, those things that, that you see. Um, people didn't just discover how to do that, right? Uh, that's, uh, you know, and so think of what are some of the things that they do? Okay, so they're yeah they're they're sweeping up the floor and they're throwing that in right. So you have your your quality one right. So the rich merchants who can who can afford the, the good prices right, they get the top quality stuff. And then you have the seconds for the for the for the poor people. Um, you're charging them more, uh, but they're bless you and uh, and they're and they're getting they're getting a, they're getting some grain. Right, but they're also getting the dirt and the dust and the the chaff and everything that's fallen, uh, you know, and, and sweeping up and any rodents that might have come through and anything that they might have left behind. That's all getting getting swept in. I don't. It's gross, right? But that's what they were doing, right? You imagine sweeping up the store. If you've ever worked in a in a food 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 prep area, right? There's a lot of junk that falls on the floor, right? Can you imagine sweeping that up and then serving it to your customers? <laughs> right. Uh, yes, John. That number three is a vivid picture of my career for 33 years here for, 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 yeah, for actually 40 years. Because it's a quality control person, my job was to make sure Oh, okay. I was going to say. I hope that 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 wasn't stuff that, that was going on, and <laughs> the, that was the stuff that you that you worked to, to prevent from happening. That's that right. right. Yeah. Yep. So what they asked to buy and their specifications were fulfilled exactly. to the letter of the right. law, so to speak. Right. Yeah. So the next thing that they were doing with that, not only did they have all that crud in there. 
then they had the <coughs> scales. So yeah, like, yeah. Putting their putting their finger on the scales or you know whatever whatever yeah. it was, right? They're not in balance. They're mm -hmm. uh, you know all these all these so things. So you get hit twice. Yep. <laughs> you know, interesting. And is. then the money that they were paying with the silver, oh, they'd weigh that out, and well, that wasn't quite as much as what the was mm -hmm. worth. Yeah. And on so top of it, now they're boosting the prices too, right? So the prices are higher, uh, right? So, uh, and, and you know, again, this isn't anything new, right? These are things that, that we've seen too. And I, I you know, uh, you see what, what happens when all of a sudden, uh, you know, whatever whatever it is, whether it's inflation or uh, whether it's an event that took took place. I still, I still remember, um, it was the, the first day or two after 9-11, uh, going to get gas and gas had gone up to like six, seven dollars a gallon at, at different different gas stations and things. Uh, they immediately raised the prices that, that high and, and all of a sudden it was, you know, it's that, and I forget what gas was, I think it was around two dollars a gallon. All of a sudden it's six, seven dollars a gallon for, for, for gas. Uh, you know, and, and you know, it took, it took a little while and then suddenly, you know, they, they came in and, and they said, okay, this this is illegal. You can't you can't be doing this, right? Um, and so, uh, but but that's you know that's nothing nothing new. Uh, you know the, the the scales that that just don't don't match up. Um, you know all those all those different different things. Um, and <clears throat> and then uh, you know the uh, willing to to let let the poor people do whatever whatever is necessary, right? To uh, you know, give up, give up their sandals so just so they can get get some get some food, right? And have to go barefoot, or you know, all these all these different things, where they're not willing to to, to you know uh, to be honest with it and stuff too. Which again uh, is 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 not a list of things that were really bad, but simply examples of when when you're when you're you're focused on on that. Um, and then the way the way that they that they focus that this was their number one priority, right? Um, they're 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 timing they're timing the sermon to see when church gets out so they can go back and open up their store store again, right? Uh, or the, the the new moon celebrations and say, okay, I'm closing for this, but uh, okay, now how long until that's done? So because I got to go open up my store again and 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 start right because this is this is this is what's driving them. This is what the number one thing is. Um, this is what's become their God, right? And um, because this is really all first commandment stuff, isn't it? Uh, this is all first commandment things where uh, this, this is my God, my, my, my livelihood is my God. And so uh, even when I'm, when I'm in worship, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about my true God, which is, which is really my, my livelihood and, and making, making money. So I need to get back to my first love uh, and, and get back to that. Uh, we just had the third commandment uh, th today in, in in confirmation class, and so you know you, you look at that and and despising preaching and his word um, is not just oh, okay I'm not going to church uh, I'm you know I'm I'm neglecting God's word because I'm not in, not in church I can be in church and still be neglecting God's word right uh, if my mind is somewhere else if my mind is is back at at my computer at at home where I need to get back to work as soon as church is done. Or uh, you know to, to go to work and, and as soon as, as church is done because I've got to I've got to go make some more money because uh, <clears throat> we got that vacation coming up and I've got to make sure I've got I've got enough enough money for that vacation so you know, uh, I've got to got to go do this uh, I might be in church still uh, but my mind certainly isn't there my mind is at work already um, or you know just just all of those things that that uh, take away from our our first our first love. Yes, sir. This is a highlight. It, by my doing my job on, in number three, I kept people like Pearl's husband off my back. He was the inspector general for a while. I know. Yep. I, exactly. That's why I said that. Yep. Yeah, when you got the inspector coming in and, and going through to make sure every T is crossed and every I is dotted, you gotta got to make sure that the quality is is there. Yep. 
<laughs> and so, um, yeah. So that's you know those are those are the are the the blessings and and those are the things that that come as a result of as a result of that, um, you know. And so uh, you know you look at that and and uh, there is there is something, but but again, um, it's more than just making sure that the quality is good, right? It's it's about uh, doing the best I I can to provide. Uh, the best for for my for my fellow man, right. and to provide it at a decent price, to provide it uh, for everyone, not just for the rich people who can afford to pay the high prices, but for but for every right. everyone, right? And and that's what that's what God is is getting at, and uh, because that is exactly the opposite of what they were doing. Uh, and so uh, number four, then, uh, what what two great judgments would the Lord bring uh, on his on his wayward people? I got earthquakes and drought. Okay, initially, right there's there's a, a earthquake and uh, <clears throat> right and, and then he talks about the darkness in the middle of the day, which which could have been an eclipse of, of some kind. Um, and again, those are some of the signs of the times, right? The sign of the of God's coming judgment. Um, and and then what else was coming? That was the physical thing. What spiritual thing was coming? Fail of God's word. All right. He says a famine is coming. It's not a famine of water. It's not a drought. It's not a famine of food. It's not locusts. It's not things that are destroying the crops. It's a famine of God's word. What does God mean by a famine of God's word? Turning away from his word. That's already taken place. He's not giving any more profit. All right. God, since they have turned away from God's word, God is actually going to do what? Turn away from them. He's take, uh, he's not even before he destroys them. He is taking his word away from them. Right? They have turned away from the Lord, so God is sending a famine of his word, which means he is taking that word away from them. Uh, the blessings and the and the, the promises of the gospel are are gone. Um, Sue, I think you said it right. He's he's not sending any more prophets. Uh, there's there's no more pro proclamation of of God's word. Um, even even Amos, as he was coming to speak that message of destruction, right? And, and I think we talked about this last time in in chapter seven. Why is Amos doing that? He's doing it because he loves the people. Right? He's still praying for these people. He still loves these people. He, does, he doesn't want this to happen. So he is going to them and, and warning them. The same way a parent is going to come down hard on, on, his, on his child when, uh, when, when, they're, when they're going in, in a dangerous direction. Um, and they're going to do what, what is necessary to stop that. Um, he loves these people. But the time is coming when God will, will take away people like Amos and take away that message. And and not, they will not have that anymore. Uh, people will look all over for, for some guidance from, from the Lord, and it won't be there. You just hear? This? Yeah, I did. Somebody's at the door? No, it's Kathy Kane. Ah, okay, okay. I didn't see Kathy had stepped out. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> can you think of a time in Israel's history or an individual in Israel's history that happened to? King Saul, exactly. Remember, uh, King Saul had been the, the king that the people wanted. And King Saul actually started out pretty good, didn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, Samuel was the prophet. And, and the Lord continued to, he was with Saul, even though he wasn't the king that, that, that the Lord wanted. The Lord was with Saul. He gave him victories. Uh, but ultimately, Saul turned away from the Lord. And towards the end, all of a sudden, Saul's trying to inquire of the Lord. He's trying to find out a message from God. And what is he hearing? Nothing. Crickets. It's crickets. Exactly. It's crickets. Um, to the point that he gets so desperate to hear something that what does he do? He's consulting um, the spirit. He goes, he goes to consult a witch, right? He goes, he goes to the witch of Endor uh, and tries to to uh, bring up Samuel from the dead to try and, and find out a, a message because I, I can't find out anything and I, I need to find out something from the Lord. 
Um, he realizes, right, how important that is, but he, it's too little too late, right? He's not, he's not looking at it from a, a standpoint of, of faith anymore. Um, he's looking at it from, from desperation. And he says, so he says people are going to be searching, searching for this, and they're not going to find it because it's not going to be there. And God's not going to be there for them um, because they have turned away from the Lord. Um, the Lord does not, does not turn away from us. Um, right? He doesn't abandon us until I make it very clear that I want nothing to do with him. Pastor, Go ahead. would this also apply to Pharaoh? Even though Pharaoh yeah. never had God's blessing, he, but he hardened his heart and then God... Right. Uh, yeah, and so, and, and uh, maybe not quite in the same way, right. but um, that, is, that is what sometimes what we describe as a sin of obduracy, uh, where uh, God, God will, uh, you know, and, and there is a, a very pronounced uh, way of, of God describing that, right? Um, you know, that, that throughout the plagues, right, those first plagues, Pharaoh hardened his heart. Pharaoh hardened his heart. Pharaoh hardened his heart. And then all of a sudden, God hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he could not turn turn back because God's will was going to be done. Yeah. Um, you know, because because each time, right, when the plague was getting really bad, Pharaoh started to weaken a little bit, right? He started to break, yeah. and then God would mercifully stop the plague, and as soon as the plague was stopped, then Pharaoh would change his mind, yeah. right? He hardened his heart, and he says, no, nope, I'm not going to let you go. No, I'm not going to let you go. And God said, no, you are going to let him go, and, I, and so I'll harden your heart to... Uh, to make them make them go, um, and you're not going to be be turning turning back, uh, which which maybe helps to explain a little bit too of uh, you know if Pharaoh's leading the army uh, to the Red Sea, uh, would you send your army into a wall of water on both sides? No, right? Uh, is that good military strategy? Uh, you know, and say, oh no, I work. Can you imagine those those Egyptian soldiers? That, you know, you want us to do what? You know. <laughs> Um, no, nope, you're you're going. We're, we're going after him. We're getting him back. Um, and yeah, uh, and all all the, the Lord had to, you know, all Moses had to do was, uh, you know, pull the staff back, and the and the, the waters waters closed, and Pharaoh, you know, the, the army was no more. Right, the Egyptian army was no more. Um, and so uh, we we have we have this as as God's as God's messengers are taken away. Um, their, their comfort from God's word is also taken away. Uh, but it's only taken away because they have pushed it away. God will never take that away from us unless I push it away and say and slam the door in his face and say, God, I don't want this anymore. And God says, ultimately, okay, fine, but please understand what, what it is that you're requesting. Um, because if, if, my, if my grace is taken away from you, uh, then you're in for a world of hurt uh, here in this earth and and for eternity. If Kathy. the grace is taken away and you repent, can you be given? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Um, that time of grace is as long as I am living and breathing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, oh. as long as I'm living and breathing. Um, see, because and and you know now God may know something different, but I don't. Right, and since since I don't know any different, uh, I'm always going to treat that person, no matter how um, obstinate against God's word and and how much they don't want God's word. Um, I'm always going to treat them as as a soul for whom Jesus died, and and seek to continue praying for them, seek every opportunity I can to share Jesus with them, in the hopes that that God will either uh, turn their heart to Him or turn their heart back to Him. Yeah, um, and so uh, as as um, uh, oh, I'm not sure exactly. Was this is a another one of um, oh, now his name is escaping me. Uh, it ain't over till it's over, right? Um, Who is that? Um, that, that, that sure. Billy. Now I'm. I, Sounds like a Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra, yeah. Yogi Berra. yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I thought of Billy Martin, and I thought of you know, all these others. Like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Yogi Berra had a, had a number, of, number of good sayings like that. But, but yeah, it, it, it ain't over till it's over, right? Um, and so uh, 
as long as that person is is living and breathing, I, you know, I'm I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that's, that the the Lord's grace has not has not turned back from them. Um, uh, but at the same time, I'm going to be be praying for them and also uh, re reminding them. And I think I think I, I shared with you last was that last week um, the the one um, it was in our conversation in our pastor's circuit and and. Uh, Somebody had shared a story of another another pastor who had been out making calls and and uh, uh, came across a, a guy that wanted wanted nothing to do with with what uh, with with uh, the message about Jesus and and said all kinds of nasty things about about him proclaiming Jesus or and, and just said you know this is I, he made it very clear and uh, and so he said you know he uh, said well uh, I am I am pastor you know so and so. And he said, well, "Why, you know, I don't care what your name is." And he said, "Oh, you're going to want to remember this, right? Yeah. Because uh, I, I, I think I did. I shared, was that last week? Yeah, I, I shared, yeah. 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 That you're going to want to remember this name uh, because when when you're standing before the Lord, uh, he's going to he's going to mention my name. He said, "This this man shared Jesus with you, and you you wanted nothing to do with it. So you, you're going to need to remember my name because you're going to hear it again." Um, that's a that's a pretty harsh preaching of the law, right? Um, and uh, so I don't know if, if the Lord ever changed that man's heart. Uh, I pray that he did. Uh, but, but, you know, the, the, the willful, obstinate uh, slamming of the door in, in God's face um, can only be met with that kind of, a, of, of, a, of a, uh, a statement to say, understand what you're doing here um, and understand the seriousness of it, which is what God is doing here through Amos. Uh, he said, please understand the seriousness of what you're doing. And what what this is leading you to, um, and and again, God's love for His people causes Him to to be so harsh with them at this at this point. Marilyn, there was a word that you used when Gwen asked a question. Obduracy. Is that what that was? Yeah, the the sin of obduracy, and and it's and it's basically. How does that spell? Uh, uh, okay, okay. I gotta write it out. Yep, obduracy. Okay. C-E-Y? C-Y. C-Y. Yeah. A-C-Y. Well, O-B-D-U-R-A-C-Y, obduracy. And it's, it's basically the, uh, the hardening, the hardening of, of your heart uh, against God. And it's, uh, it'd be, be very similar to what Jesus describes uh, in what we often, often call the sin, of the, Holy, the sin against the Holy Spirit. Uh, but the sin against the Holy Spirit, right, is the is the sin of, of willful, knowledgeable, persistent unbelief. Right? I know better, but I'm rejecting anyway. Right? Um, and so anyone who might be concerned about about that sin has not committed it. Right? Because the one who's committing that sin is doesn't care that he's committing it. Or or you know, or obviously what does this mean? Um, it's it's the it's the it's a willful Persistent, knowledgeable, blatant unbelief. Right, all the adjectives that you can fit in there. Um, basically saying, I know, I know this. Um, I'm, but, but I'm, I'm, I, I knowingly and willfully, and wholeheartedly reject this, and want nothing to do with it. It's not just unbelief. It's not ignorance. It's willful. It's it's I I know this. I I've, I've heard this, um, and I'm rejecting this. That's like a two-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are. Yeah. Well, I don't know how I missed that. Word. Uh, it's it's not it's not a it's not one that's that's real that that that, that we use that we use often. Yeah, it's not one that we use often. No, but like my often. college right. classes didn't have any. Use, you know? <laughs> But it's it is this it is a, a and and um, that's that's what God is saying here this this famine the the famine of the word of God is because of because of, of sins like this um, God doesn't just take his word away from people unless this is happening um, this is this is something that you know I want nothing I want nothing to do with this anymore um, and again. 
they had had prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet that had, had shared God's words and God's warnings with them. And God finally says, I'm done. I'm not sending any more prophets. In fact, I'm, 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 even the ones that are there, I'm, I'm pulling out. Uh, they're, they're not, they're not going to be, you're not going to have God's word around you anymore. And I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any messages for you. I'm not going to have any, any comfort for you. Um, and then that quote uh, that, that uh, from Luther, right? The gospel is like this rain shower, right? And it, and it passes, passes over. Um, and it, it's, and it's, it's very easy for it to, to move on to someplace else. And all you have to do is look at, at a map of the world and know the history of the world to know that, that areas that once were concentrations of, of Christians uh, are now barren wastelands with no Christians. God's word, is, is, it's, it went away. Okay? Um, and so uh, God's great commission to get the word out into all the world and preach the good news to all creation, um, that has been done already. Um, it's, it's, it's an end process. It's, it's been done. It's, it's been proclaimed everywhere. Um, not everywhere has it now, right? But, but God's word has been proclaimed into every corner of the world. Uh, there is no word, there's nowhere in the world that has not been exposed to God's word at one time. Uh, now, there are generations removed from God's word so that they don't know about, about anything about God's word now. Um, but that's happened over generations who have, have lost it, right? Um, so you look in the deepest, darkest parts of, of Africa. Those, those, those areas had, had the gospel at one time. Um, they don't have it now, and we're looking at, you know, to, to, we're still trying to get, get it in, uh, get back back in, right? Uh, but you look, at, you look at the Middle East, right? Some of those areas where Christians are, are in fear for their lives every, every day. Um, those very same areas were once the heart and core of Christianity. Uh, when I look at the geography, you got uh, the Himalayans, you got the Mongolians, you got the, the north uh, uh, east uh, from Manchuria north. Are you saying that all that area has at one time been uh, have had the gospel shared with them? Have, have had the gospel shared with them, yes, in the history of the world, yes. Which, which is, you know, and, and that again helps us to understand where Jesus says the gospel must be proclaimed in every part of the world and then the end will come, right? Uh, so it's, it's not that it's, it's you know, it's, it continues to happen uh, because not every area still has it, but... Uh, but yeah, we can we can safely say the gospel has been proclaimed everywhere. Um, it it isn't everywhere now. There are a lot of places in the world where it, where it's absent. Um, but uh, you look at you look at those at those areas and and uh, the early church histories uh, have um, even the apostles getting into um, far far reaches of of the world that's that I I just don't don't know you know. With with first century uh, ways of transportation, um, you know, to, that they would have would have reached the areas that they that that the early church histories. Uh, and again, this isn't this that, but I think it, it's pretty pretty reliable stuff. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, we have we have those those things. Um, so, and again, uh, question five is kind of a slow pitch softball question. Why is all these sufferings coming on Israel? Because of their idolatry, right? Um, it is because of their rejection of the Lord. They have turned to idols, um, even when they thought they were still worshiping the Lord. And ultimately, number six: How then, or how can we take these words to heart uh, and and make sure that that we understand that God isn't just speaking through Amos to the Old Testament Israelites. He's speaking to us in, in 21st century as well. So the same thing can happen to us if we don't, if we hmm. turn away from this word, it was out of repentance. Mm -hmm. Gwen. Um, I was going to say that I think what I, what I take away from it, I guess, is that 
even though they were condemned, and Amos was telling them that, you know, that your destruction is coming, he was still, I think, trying to reach those individuals. Absolutely. So hope, hope was not yep. lost. Absolutely. Exactly. And I think we can take that to heart as well, because even though we might see areas in the world where <coughs> we clearly are seeing that, um, that God's word has been taken away from those areas, we can still reach the individuals that yeah. still may live there. Yeah, my word will not return to me empty. It'll accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. Heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and you know those uh, those little those little pockets mm -hmm. that 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 remain. Uh, I think we discovered that uh, when the iron or when the um, uh, yeah the, the iron yeah when the iron yeah iron yeah, curtain yeah. Uh, fell in yeah. in the late eighties early nineties and all of a sudden 89. we were gonna. We were gonna we were gonna send we were gonna send in missionaries into Russia now that that, it, that Russia had become such a godless godless society and things and we got in there and found that Christianity was still pretty strong uh, in those in those areas where we were going um, and uh, you know they they were finally able to, to come out of hiding now but uh, but yeah churches had been turned into museums and and all kinds of other with the ones that, that weren't weren't demolished were were you know. Uh, turned into other other kinds of, of buildings, but uh, you know the buildings may have been been out of out of use, but uh, God's word was not out of use. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say too that um, I think it's so important for us to support the Christians that remain in those countries mm. because that's the only way it's yep. going to spread. Right. Um, we can, I mean, we definitely can pray for them too, but I think it's important to to help those Christians that are, that were, decide to stay right. in places where they are yep. persecuted and, and tortured. Yeah, and that's why you know in those those parts of the world, um, and this, and one of the blessings that we have is with our modern technologies now, um, we we have been able to reach out to, to people in in so many countries where we will never be able to send in missionaries, um, you know, and I'm not gonna you know, because we're 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 on right now. I'm not gonna mention any of those countries, but uh, but there's there's plenty of areas in the world where uh, you know. You're putting your life on the line to confess Jesus as their Savior, uh, but uh, we're we're getting God's word into those areas through all kinds of different means, and uh, what a what a tremendous blessing to be able to do that, and uh, to and that's uh, that's one of the one of the blessings that uh, you know um, thinking of our our mission offerings um, and things that 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 we do. Um, the email I sent out yesterday with the you know that's a summary of our of our congregation. Um, our mission offerings as a synod, um, probably one of the highest ever in 2021, uh, more than a more than a million dollars uh, over what was was committed by the congregations. Um, you know what a what a blessing uh, to be able to to have those those resources to uh, to be able to to share share Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so did everybody get that email? I didn't. I don't remember seeing. Uh, there was a, uh, sent it out. Yes. Yesterday, uh, there were two files. Uh, one was a together newsletter. The other was a, a single, single page with a summary of our, our all of our mission offerings for, um, for as a congregation for 2021. Yes. So. Um, well, we have been quite distracted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. So that takes care of, of chapter eight. And uh, next week, then, we will look at uh, chapter 9, finish up with, with Amos. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been talking about a lot of, of uh, God's destruction and things, but uh, Amos does, does end on a, a joyful note with, with, the, um, with the, the restoration and the, the love and, and grace and mercy, which, again, is always the final word from our God. Okay? Let's close tonight with prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Uh, thank you for... Uh, these these words of warning that you that you give to us uh, help us uh, to always treasure the message that you you've given to us and uh, never Lord to, to seek to, to turn away from it think that we don't need it uh, and then turn to other things in our lives for for support uh, as we heard on Sunday uh, those things are just they're they're not reliable they're always going to disappoint anyway uh, and so Lord you are our only source of reliability peace love comfort and forgiveness. Uh, help us to cling to you always as we seek to live our lives in reflection of your love to others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.